Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Lisa here from Down to Earth Gardening and today's video is on such an easy, beautiful, deciduous shrub and that is the Panicle Hydrangeas. So I want to talk about them a little bit. Um, you know I all love to talk about, <laughs> I love to talk about flowers, but I want to talk a lot about the Panicle Hydrangeas and how fantastic they are and how easy they are. And then I want to talk about a few of my favorite varieties. So just look at this curb appeal that we have here in front of this house. This is a mass planting of the Panicle Hydrangeas and there's two different varieties here. But I have to say that if you're a hydrangea lover um, and we all do love our blue hydrangeas, this is the way to go. The blue hydrangeas can be a little finicky and a little more maintenance, whereas there are so many panicle varieties that come in a white, a limey white, a pink, a mauve, and a deep mauve. Um, so an array of whites and pinks that are really beautiful and that I think if you love hydrangeas and you love easy plants, you'll love them. So they grow well in zones three through eight i'm in zone 6a here and they do fabulous sometimes you will see them growing in zone nine they're pretty versatile as far as where you can plant them so they do prefer their full sun and in fact uh, you may have seen my drought tolerant shrub lineup and i have a panicle hydrangea in there that i love and it's in front of my own house doesn't get any water and it flowers reliably. So pretty drought tolerant, will take full sun, um, but also will take part sun. So they will do okay with as little as four hours of sun a day. And in fact, in this spot here, they really are just getting some afternoon sun. So maybe four to five hours. And that's why they're a little leggier and they're leaning forward but I still think they look beautiful. So not super fussy about their soil. They are longtime bloomers. So they will start blooming midsummer and they will carry right on into the fall when a lot of other things are fading. Um, so the blooms typically will start as white. Um, some of them will stay a little more white than others. And then as it gets cooler, they take on these really beautiful pink and mauve hues. And uh, mid to late fall, you know, they will start turning brown. But I have some clients that still like to leave them in the winter. The birds will use them for nesting material. And they do provide some winter interest. They do also look really pretty with the ice and the snow on them. So that's another great feature about them. So last but not least, I wanna talk about how low maintenance they are. So with the blue hydrangeas, we spend a lot of time adjusting the soil and the pH and fussing with pruning and whatnot. No fertilization has been done to these hydrangeas here. So very little soil adjustment. Um, and then the best thing is there's really no guesswork about when to prune them. And there's so many different conversations about the blue hydrangeas and old wood, new wood. The panicle hydrangeas, you can prune or shear in the late fall or in the early spring. And we do have some little video clips for you of Josh doing um, some shearing at my house on my hydrangeas. So let's get down to it and talk about the varieties. We have two varieties here in this front bed and the one that is in front of me is called Vanilla Strawberry. And I think it is very well named. And then next to it here, we have our limelight hydrangeas. And I just love on both of these, these are literally like football size blooms here. So you can see the difference in the flower color. 
where the limelight will take on a limey white color. They will eventually turn mauve as well, but the vanilla strawberry are literally more of a bicolor um, flower head. So, and we have some down at the end that are already starting uh, to turn a deeper shade of mauve. Does look like vanilla strawberry ice cream. Cones. So you all know how beautiful these are for drying too. So not just fresh, but dried. These are amazing. So let me talk some more about these two varieties and then I want to show you a few more. Vanilla strawberry. It looks good enough to eat. This panicle hydrangea can grow up to six to eight feet tall and four to five feet wide. It's great in zones four through nine. And the beauty of this one is it really is ever changing. It has a gradient bloom um, and it starts off as a pale green, changing to cream, then turning blush pink, and then it really gets almost um, a red. It's a deep, rich rose color. And the stems are bright red, which is definitely an added bonus for some winter interest. And it looks delicious. And here we have Limelight Hydrangea, which is such a prized panicle hydrangea because it's a tried and true and it's super reliable and beautiful. It is great in zones four to eight. Now I read three to nine, but you know, I'm a little conservative when it comes to my planting zones. It gets about six to eight feet tall and wide, and it has beautiful panicles that are so large, they're around 12 inches long, and they're the football shape flower. Starts as a lime green, turns cream, and then turns the pink burgundy color in the fall. Next up, I really wanna show you Little Lime, and that's because this is the dwarf version of Limelight. So for those of you that love limelight but have a smaller space, this is going to be perfect. It's a little more compact. It's about half the size, so it gets to be about three to five feet tall and wide. And it was bred from limelight, so it virtually has uh, very similar characteristics. So I do like to use my gardens as test gardens um, and I have little lime right next to the full-size limelight in my back garden. I also do like to play around with proportions, so that's fun for me to see them together. But it shows you the difference in height, um, so you'll get to see that here in this little video. Next up, we have something a little bit different, also a panicle hydrangea, but I really wanted to show you this one because the blooms are a little bit different. So this one is a little airier and has some really lacy texture to it. And it's called quick fire hydrangea. It gets to be about six to eight feet tall and wide, and it's great for zones four through eight. This one will bloom a little early for a panicle hydrangea, which is also pretty great. We get a longer bloom time from it. It has strong stems, and the flowers start off as white and change to pink as the season progresses, and then it will turn a deeper red. So I had to show you this one, also one of my favorite panicle hydrangeas. And next we have Bobo. So you all may have seen the Bobo hydrangea in my drought tolerant video. Um, I just love my Bobo. This is definitely one of my top picks and it's appropriate for zones three through eight. Um, what I really love about it is it also has the big panicle flowers that start off the traditional white and then turn a deep mauve in the fall, but it has very strong upright stems. So it won't get as leggy or as floppy as some of the other panicle varieties. So you can keep it a nice rounded or vase shape, and you can help do that with your shearing and pruning, which like I said, can be done in the late fall or in the early spring. And I do have a little video for you on 
how we sheared uh, my bobo at my house this spring. So easy, we just took about a third off um, and it is stunning. So it does say when you read up on bobo that it gets about three feet tall when mature. My bobo is at least five feet tall. So you could take a little more off, you could take up to a half off safely and keep it a little shorter. But I don't know, I guess it's happy where it is. Um, it does get about three to four feet wide. So it is considered more of a dwarf hydrangea, but I do want you uh, to all know that it's a little larger in my own garden, just for planning purposes. So this is the end of our uh, panicle hydrangea video. And of course I have to end it with the Bobo hydrangea because it is one of my top picks. Um, I use it very often for not only residential clients, but also for municipal and commercial projects because they are just so hardy. And I know on some of those areas, they're not going to get watered and they still are reliable and they bloom for quite a long time. So I'm going to enjoy this well into fall and it's going to turn a beautiful mob and I'll probably be drying some and bringing some inside. So thank you so much for joining me today. I love doing these videos for you and I hope I've given you some ideas for your own gardens at home. If you like this one, go ahead and tap like and subscribe to our channel. We have so many more gardening videos coming your way.